vitamin D deficiency makes a person prone to frequent coughs, colds, even pneumonias. When there was an influenza epidemic, even that time it was found that vitamin D deficiency is one big reason making the people prone to get this coronavirus infection. It's a risk factor. There are a lot of papers, a lot of studies that have come up recently, evidence-based, which show that lower the levels of vitamin D, more is the vulnerability of getting COVID-19 infection. And this is a nice graphic depiction which shows the same point. Uh, you can see that the green color stands for those who have vitamin D blood levels more than 30 nanogram per ml. And the reds are those who are less than 20. So the percentage number of cases and the severity is higher when the vitamin D levels are lower. And this is a depiction of the relationship of vitamin D with the mortality rate. So lower the levels of vitamin D in the blood, higher is the death rate. And as the vitamin D levels increase in blood, those who are COVID positive, the death rate significantly comes down. So let's see how vitamin D helps in the immune functions. Vitamin D, if it's in good levels, there is increased production, natural internal production of these catholicidins, and defenses inside our own body. Amazing. And this picture shows it so beautifully. Okay. You can see how the spike proteins, the spike are getting covered with these natural defense mechanisms called defenses and catholicidins. Okay. It's vitamin D is not just a nutrient. It's a hormone. It's an immune modulator. And it's also a genetic modulator to our advantage. This slide shows the genetic modulator role of vitamin D. You can see the citation, the paper to support it. It's no longer an optional supplement. It's a cellular necessity today. It is our life health support system. Now comes the question, how much you take? What is the right blood level? Well, initially vitamin D recommendations when they were made, they were done keeping only prevention of bone, you know, wrong health like rickets. We didn't want that. So the recommendations were only for that. And what were they? If you do a blood test, if your blood levels are 20 nanogram per ml, you can prevent rickets. And this can be achieved with doses of mere 400 to 800 international units taken daily. These recommendations were made in the past, but later it was realized that the doses recommended are too less for general health. And a statistical error has been made in the calculation. You can see all these papers, the big vitamin D mistake. So 20 nanogram, I'll just say the number 20 now, nanogram is the common unit, is too low. It's suboptimal. 40 is the minimal desired level in units, nanogram per ml. And that is the minimal needed for overall health. Another nice paper to say that even to prevent pneumonias, respiratory infections, minimum 40 nanogram is needed. In children, they say that the target should be 40 to 70 levels in the blood, nanogram in blood, to keep our children healthy and have a strong immune system. Why only children, even adults? So a vitamin D supplementation program to prevent disease much like the current vaccination program could potentially have a dramatic impact on overall health worldwide. So the whole thing has to be understood in today's perspective where there's too much of deficiency. And it's great to know that our ancestors who were basically farmers, their blood levels used to be 80 nanogram per ml and above. And they were much more healthier than what we are today. So above 40, up to 80. This is what is even recommended today. The endocrine society says 30 to 100 nanogram is sufficient. So friends, we need to take it up. We need to take it above. Okay. 40 prevents pneumonias and for coronavirus type of deadly viruses, there's no harm touching up to 60. 60 and above would be good. And see how sad the reports are today. Nobody today has levels of 40 at least without supplementing because the reports we see are 
less than 3, 5, 8, 10, 12. It's really shocking, really shocking. 21st century evaluation of vitamin D says, proven that our daily, normal, physiological, safe dose of vitamin D is 10,000 units per day. It is absolutely safe to have that as an adult dose. Taking a supplement is an intervention a person can implement immediately. Rather than feeling scared, feeling victimized, vitamin D supplementation leads to a feeling of control and well, it enhances well-being too. It is a well-known fact that inadequate exposure to sunlight predisposes to vitamin D deficiency. Recent evidence from our study proved that individuals with predominant indoor activity had significantly lower vitamin D level compared to those with predominant outdoor activity and adequate sunlight exposure. In Indian scenario, exposure of about 20% of body surface to sunlight for about 20 minutes a day between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. would normally produce about 2,000 international units of vitamin D in 24 hours. Two months of lockdown, that is 60 days, with predominant indoor activity would have created a shortage of about 1,20,000 international units of vitamin D. This warrants an immediate supplementation of two doses of 60,000 international units of vitamin D, lest we should further slip down from our deficiency state. Actual correction of vitamin D deficiency depends on body mass index and initial status of vitamin D for a given individual and body mass index is calculated by dividing weight in kilogram by height in meter square. Now that the dose response relationship of vitamin D is well established from our study, to achieve a target of 40 to 60 nanogram per ml of vitamin D from an average individual level of 20 nanogram per ml would require three doses of daily vitamin D supplementation for underweight category individuals and four doses for normal in weight category individuals and six doses for overweight and obese individuals. This pulse D prophylactic protocol is recommended for individuals who are more than 18 years of age and who have not taken high dose of vitamin D that is 60,000 international units of vitamin D over a period of last three months either daily, weekly or monthly or who have taken 1,000 international units or more of vitamin D daily for a period of last three months. And it is advisable to get a vitamin D level done if you have done so. Now, it is contraindicated for those individuals who have hypercalcemic state like sarcoidosis, metastatic malignancies, primary hyperparathyroidism or nephrocalcinosis or nephrolithiasis. To conclude, this Pulse D prophylactic protocol Four doses of vitamin D, that is 60,000 international units of vitamin D taken daily would be sufficient to raise your vitamin D level to 40 to 60 nanogram per ml in an individual who is normal in weight to his height. Thank you. It's time we talk about vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D deficiency is a worldwide problem. Now, more than ever, it's not the time to be vitamin D deficient. Vitamin D is so fundamental in supporting several human functions with cellular growth, remodeling human function, nerve, as well as muscle function. When you talk about vitamin D, everybody gets scared, am I getting too much? Should I be worried about vitamin D toxicity or hypovitaminosis? It's all about getting optimal level and maintaining the optimal, optimal level. We have enough evidence-based medicine that vitamin D is not as toxic as once we thought. Today, there was a 10-year study based on this study, vitamin D toxicity and hypercalcemia is extremely rare. The evidence is clear that vitamin D toxicity is one of the rarest medical conditions and is typically due to someone taking very high doses 
every day for months and years. We have enough article-based medicines which I'll be displaying here. Let's take care of ourselves with optimal vitamin D. If you're worried that you're taking too much, please get it tested and maintain the optimal level. Higher vitamin D levels and sun exposure proven important for disease prevention. And remember, sunshine and vitamin D are the nature's free medicines for body and mind. I can't agree enough with John Cannell, who is a vitamin D researcher, says worrying about vitamin D toxicity is like worrying about drowning when you are dying in, of thirst. So let us take away and have a clear, clear our myths with in vitamin D toxicity. And let's take care of our vitamin D levels and let's be optimal by keeping our vitamin D levels around 50. We have enough evidence that we are not getting enough vitamin D levels from our sun exposure due to the different environmental changes. And we have very, very few foods that are optimal in vitamin D. So it's time we take our vitamin D deficiency seriously and we get treated. And again, I state, this is not the time to be vitamin D deficient. And it's time we see and we keep our vitamin D levels optimal to prevent any infections and to prevent any diseases. My name is Banu. I'm a pharmacist in Long Island area of New York, which is the epicenter of the COVID-19 crisis. I would like to share my experience in dealing with COVID-19 prevention during this outbreak. It is clear that a real solution must be employed as measures like social distancing, physical barriers, contact tracing, lockdowns, etc., though effective thus far, are not intended to cure this illness, but to limit the spread so our healthcare infrastructure is not overwhelmed. We see that different countries have been affected to varying degrees. The regions that received most sun were affected to a lesser extent. Recent studies have tied the severity and mortality of this disease to the vitamin D levels of the individuals. In India, people who work outside and regularly get sun exposure were affected less, and despite the population density, this is spreading a lot slower than elsewhere. In the US, homeless population who spend most of their time outside have not been affected as much as the people who are forced to be indoors like nursing home residents. The biggest risk now, as the lockdowns are being lifted, is for the people who have been sheltered thus far. Most of the world's population is deficient in this vital nutrient. Most people who are ending up on ventilators in New York have their levels in the single digits. Several studies reported that levels between 60 and 100 nanograms per ml were proven to be protective. Looking at China and Europe, back in February, I started all my employees on 10,000 units of vitamin D two times a day. After eight weeks, we brought their levels above 80 nanograms per ml. About 100 employees have been working full schedules and have not gotten sick. Then we gave 50,000 units daily for 10 days to people who had a family member diagnosed with active infection. That also proved to be effective in preventing infection even in people who had been in direct contact with positive patients. Vitamin D is crucial in making our immune system function as it should. In this illness, the virus is not directly fatal, but the overactive immune system reacting to viral proliferation is causing massive inflammatory damage to the lungs, blood vessels, organs, and that is the real problem in this disease. Vitamin D is an immune modulator, and it works in multiple ways in addressing the complications of this disease. Good news is that this can be taken safely in very high doses over short periods, and its deficiency can be addressed in a matter of eight weeks or even in 10 days. Please get your vitamin D level checked and supplement to maintain it between 60 and 100 nanograms per ml. That could mean the difference between life and death.